Good evening, everyone. Fred Emmett here doing a rear shock and rear differential fluid change um, on my camper van here. So, to show you what I did to get started, is um, I went ahead and jacked up the rear with both of these um, combination jacks. Super heavy duty, super, I, I don't cheap out on these due to safety. Um, and right, um, I'm gonna be changing the differential fluid. You see this leak a little bit, not much. And I'm um, gonna be changing out the shocks. I don't cheap out on rear diff fluid because it's uh, you change it so infrequently and it can have a little effect on fuel economy. So I got Royal Purple. I also have done um, Redline before, but 75W90. Here's my half inch ratchet. I apologize, a little bit of a busy-ish street right now, but if you're having trouble getting them off, you can always make an extension by getting a deep socket, an extension, and then I need to know this, and then that torque will help you. I've loosened all these a good bit here. Um, and one thing I was thinking while I was doing this, one thing you want to check is your pinion seal up here. Uh, if it's dry or if it's leaking, I mean, this is the time to change it. You might want a screwdriver um, or like a paint scraper to peel this off. This is the one I use for pretty much all these jobs. Um, you see, I have all the nuts removed here um, from the diff cover and that's all the bolts piled up there. So um, you're gonna wedge this between here and it's kind of leaking already. You want a drain pan and we're gonna open it on up, have it peeled back. I don't have it all the way off though, so I'm not making like a complete mess. What I've been doing is just scraping, scraping, scraping away the old RTV. Go ahead and wrap the differential part up in uh, this blue towel to keep the particulate out of there so it doesn't get all grimy and bearings don't like that. One more thing I'm gonna do is get a solvent and uh, in my case, I'm just gonna use some little alcohol pads, but you could also use like a uh, brake cleaner spray. Just get a little bit of that and dry it off. Got the differential cover. Uh, all I did was scrape, scrape this metal, get as much of the gasket and grime off as I could. And I used an old alcohol pad to uh, get any extra gunk off and get it ready for adhesion for RTV. And I've completed putting on the RTV. You can see um, <laughs> I put a good bit on here, but I circled the bolt holes and went ahead in kind of a line around everything else. A little bit sloppy, but it'll get the job done. With this blue type Permatex or uh, RTV, you are gonna go ahead and finger tighten all these. I just tighten it with like with my hand and a fingers on a socket really to get the best grip. And there it is. And what I do and where I trick is I get my finger with my gloves and I go ahead and spread that along there. Now I'm gonna wait an hour and let that dry. And in the meantime, I'm gonna replace these shocks. Removed one shock here. Um, I went ahead and did one and I'll show you the process on the second one, but here's the first one out. Um, I could tell it's uh, saturated is one way I can tell the sh rear shock is bad. And I already replaced the front too. Um, another way I can tell is when I collapse it, there's very little resistance. Um, so here's the new one. It was time to replace, and this will definitely help with stability. Here is the finished installed shock. I'm about to go through the process a little bit on the other side, but on these road tracks specifically, I would say it is quite a booger, any shocks. This is my third shock I've done now. Each one has had their own challenges, incredibly challenging, so up in between the black water tank uh, and the frame here there's pretty much just enough room for that bolt and your fingers to kind of or uh, a, a three eight three quarter um, combo wrench that's all the space there is I didn't do a video on the front shocks but you can see them the yellow shocks installed here each of those took probably like legit 12 hours between the two of them, between cutting all the rusty old stuff off and just fighting with it and finding a method to get them on. 
Um, I'm also, our TV is pretty dry now. It's been a day. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this shock absorber off. Under the driver's side here, I got two three quarter inch crest or combo wrenches. One, um, one is ratcheting, one is not. I'm getting the boxed end of this. And you can see, zoom in here. That is the nut. The bolt goes through here. There's a little bit more space on the driver's side, so maybe it'll be easier. Famous last words. Here we go. All right, second bolt here is out. So what I had to use, actually I had to use the impact wrench there because it was so tight on. It's finally in, so got this bolt through the shock here. And all the way up through here, I was able to fit my fingers. Uh, able to fit my hand in there and tighten that this bolt up here it was all the way on the the frame right there so pretty awesome so now i got two new shocks one right here slider and run right over there and now we'll go ahead and fill up the pumpkin with royal purple back here at the rear differential so i went ahead and tightened up all these bolts i kind of do it and kind of uh, kind of like a car lug nut. I go here, then tighten over here, then tighten over here, tighten over here. Now I'll go ahead and take off this fill plug with a just kind of a flat head um, slotted screwdriver. Here's the process I use. So got, um, this is a $10 part you can get at a part store, probably less on Amazon. But you go ahead, it's much easier than Trying to fit it between this gas, this gas tank and most differentials, it's not an easy fit. So you just pump the purple, royal purple diff fluid in there. We're all done here. Got the royal purple in there and got the two brand new shocks over here. I'm just gonna zip tie up that um, loose emergency parking brake cable and we will be done. Thank you so much for following along. My name is Fred Amiet. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this.